Something's wrong with my legs when I go like this and then I go like that. I end up the like thicker and they're like a little bit wetter. Hey, Barstool, stop romanticizing smokeless tobacco. It causes cancer. If there's one thing that has a chokehold on teenagers here in the US, it has got to be vaping. They will literally lose their mind, flip the household upside down just in order to get their USB. That is a slow killer. Now, there is a safer alternative that has been going on for decades in Scandinavia, which is Norway, Denmark, as well as Sweden, I believe. We will be discussing whether this is a safer alternative or just a lose-lose situation, a slow killer just like the vapes are. So let's get into it. Full disclaimer, this video is for educational purposes is only if there is something that I miss and you're like, mm, that information seems a little incorrect. Remember what I've always told you guys, I am not in the medical field, all right? The research I do is just about as good as you, if not just a tad bit better because I do go on a deep dive when I do these things, but that is neither here or there. Let's get into what is going on with these teenagers. So not so long ago, I was scrolling through TikTok when I stumbled upon a snus talk. I didn't even know that snus was a thing, okay? It is in the Scandinavia, like I have mentioned, making its waves here in the West, and TikTok is helping teenagers communicate with each other and pretty much influence each other into doing bad things, which we have all been teenagers, so not surprising, just always disappointing. Now, when I saw snus, I immediately thought of dip, except snus comes in a pouch, and yeah, we're gonna get into more of it. Now, to differentiate between a snus and a dip. Snus and dip are both forms of smokeless tobacco, but they have some key differences. Snus is a product or originated in Sweden, which for your information is illegal and banned in the EU, except Sweden. Now, I don't know about Denmark or Norway, but it is definitely banned in the EU. So this has been a popular smoking alternative in Sweden for decades. It is a most finely grounded uh, tobacco that comes in small pouches. Now I stumbled on tobacco because it also has nicotine. We're gonna get into all of that. You pretty much take this cancer forming pouch and you stick it up into your upper lip. Now, unlike dip, Snout doesn't require you to spit. And if you have seen those dippers that spit, that spit looks like some ugly juice that, uh, yeah, it's very disgusting, pretty much. The reason why snus is truly appealing to a lot of people is because it is somewhat discreet as well as you don't really need to spit. Plus it's flavored, making it more palatable, especially to new users. Now, nicotine and tobacco are closely related, but fundamentally different in terms of their composition as well as their effects. They're pretty much like cousins or maybe even siblings. So we're gonna start with nicotine, which is a naturally occurring chemical compound found in the tobacco plant. It is a stimulant that primarily affects the central nervous system and is highly addictive. So when you consume it, nicotine causes the release of dopamine, which is a neutral transmitter associated with pleasure as well as reward, which is why it leads to what? Addiction. Nicotine can also be delivered to the body in various forms, including smoking, vaping, and using nicotine replacement therapies like gums or even patches. Now, tobacco, on the other hand, refers to the leaves of the nicotinia plants, which contain nicotine as well as the host of other chemicals. You see how they're kind of like cousins as well as sisters, siblings, whatever you want to call it. So when tobacco is processed and used in products like cigarettes, cigars, snuff, or chew, it delivers nicotine to the user. However, Tobacco also contains many other harmful chemicals, substances, including cancer-causing agents like tar, carbon monoxide, as well as formaldehyde. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I will leave it on the screen for you guys. These substances are pretty much responsible for the severe health risks associated with smoking and using other tobacco products such as lung cancer, heart disease, as well as respiratory issues. And before we move forward, just know that this video is specifically for teenagers as well as parents that don't partake in these activities. If you are already an adult snoofing or snuffing or chewing or snussing or whatever the case is, vaping, that is on you. You should know the risks that are involved in that. We will be getting into adults that do these things, but just know it is on you. You should know the dangers. My main concern is with the teenagers. You may be thinking to yourself, well, why do you care so much about what teenagers do? They should know the difference. And you're absolutely correct. They should, but they don't. And nine times out of 10, teenagers don't really do the research. You have been a teenager yourself. I know I have. And influence is huge. And some people fall for that. A lot of teenagers fall victims to peer 
pressure or sometimes teenagers do things because they want to be cool. Y'all have been teenagers. Why am I explaining this? A dip or moist snuff is another type of smokeless tobacco, which is typically used in a more conspicuous way. You may place it between your lower lip as well as your gum. And because it produces a lot of saliva, users often spit out the excess. So if you've ever seen somebody spitting inside a container of any sorts continuously, they're most likely dipping. And it is, uh, in my opinion, very disgusting. Anyway, so dip has higher levels of nitrosamines, which are cancer causing chemicals, making it particularly hazardous when it comes to oral as well as throat cancers. Now you might have heard that snuff is a safer alternative and I have mentioned it as well in the beginning when it is compared to smoking as well as using dip. And to some extent that is true. There's no burning like with cigarettes. You're avoiding the risk associated with inhaling smoke such as lung cancer and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease which i believe is copd in fact sweden where snuff is widespread has some of the lowest rates of lung disease in europe but and that is a big but this does not mean that it is without risk snuff still contains nicotine which is highly addictive so while the nitrosamine levels in snuff are lower than in dip they're still significantly higher than what you find in everyday foods like nitride preserved meats now these nitrosamines are directly linked to various cancers cancers, including pancreatic cancer, which has been shown to occur at higher rates among SNUS users. Like I've said before, there's also issues of oral care. SNUS use is associated with gum disease, tooth loss, as well as oral mucosal lesions, basically sores or abnormal changes in the lining of your mouth that can be precursors to cancer. So while you might not be spitting brown juice into a cup all day, your gums and your teeth are still taking the hit. Now here's where things get extremely concerning. In recent years, there has been a noticeable trend of teens using snus as a way to quit vaping. On the surface, this might seem like a smart move. Vaping has been linked to a range of respiratory issues. I have talked about them in my other videos, including the now infamous vape lung, popcorn lung. So teenagers, as you may think, are probably saying, if I'm not inhaling anything, then I'm probably safe. Well, not really. This is where the analogy of putting a Band-Aid on a broken glass comes into play. Sure, you're dodging some of the immediate dangers of vaping, but you're not actually solving the core problem. You're simply just shifting it. Nicotine addiction remains and with it, all the associated health risks are there. And let's not forget that SNUS isn't exactly a harmless product. The long-term use of it is still linked to serious health issues, including an increased risk of pancreatic cancer, heart disease, type 2 diabetes, as well as oral cancer, as I have mentioned with a dip, as well as chew, as well as snuff whatever you guys call them vaping, they all have some type of health issue related to them. So the biggest issue I have with teens switching from vaping to snus is that they're not really quitting. They're just trading one form of nicotine for another. Nicotine is incredibly addictive. Like I have been saying, whether you are getting it from a vape, a cigarette, a little pouch of snus. The issue is that once you're hooked, your body craves that nicotine continuously and it becomes incredibly difficult for you to break free from the shackles of nicotine as well as tobacco. I don't know where that came from. And this whole trying the safer route with snuffs leads to what the public health experts call a dual use, where individuals end up using multiple nicotine products. For instance, a teen might start with vaping, switch to snus, thinking it's safer, but then go back to vaping or even pick up smoking as well. This kind of behavior doesn't reduce the health risk, it only multiplies them. At this time, let's get into people's commentary. It will be some doctors, parents making bad decisions, as well as teenagers that just love it all so much. Let's get into it. You know smoking and vaping are bad for your teeth, but what about snus? I'm a dentist, let's get into it. So for those of you that don't know, snus is essentially tobacco. It's in this form, you put it between your gums and your teeth, and it has a very close contact to the gums, the teeth, and the lips. So you have a slow release of the chemicals. What effect can this have on the gums and teeth over time? Over time, it can cause the gum recession because as you can imagine, the product pushes up on the gums and the gums can recede and obviously this is a problem. It also has been shown to affect the gums in terms of gum disease. Why? Because it affects the good bacteria in your mouth. The mouth has good bacteria and bad bacteria and basically what it does is it tips the mouth in the favor of the bad bacteria so you're more prone to getting gum disease. The other thing is the grittiness of it can cause tooth grinding which can also make your teeth become shorter. That's a smaller side effect. 
And lastly, it can cause lesions in there and if left for too long, it can become cancerous. So overall, we don't recommend it. You don't see many people do it in the UK. It's more likely to be seen in Scandinavian countries, but definitely stay away from it. Let me know if you have any more questions. And like if you're American and you've only tried the Zins that they sell here in the States, they're not the same. Let me tell you, this is from a Swedish person. This is how it's supposed to be. First of all, they're supposed to have a lid where you can dispose your Zin when you're done with it. So you don't have to like leave them in a random place or like spit them out. And if someone asks you, do you want a Zen? You're supposed to be able to do this. Like that's how you're supposed to offer it. You can't do that with the packaging here in the States. And then like, how cool does this look? If someone's like, oh, can I have Zen? Absolutely. <laughs> like that's my party trick. Secondly, or thirdly, whatever. They're like, thicker and they're like a little bit wetter like they have like they're like juicier they're not like dry and they're not six milligrams they're 6.5 like i'm such a happy swedish person right now also i think i should be the zen girl i've been petitioning this for a long time like I think I made Zen popular. And I think that is not something to be prideful of. Anyways, this is what gum disease looks like because a lot of us hear gum disease and we're like, eh, we bet an eye for it. But I thought it'd be important to show you guys exactly what it looks like. We're gonna get into a doctor that talks about it later, but this is oral cancer as well. If you did not know, it usually typically starts in the tongue, I believe. But yeah, this is what it looks like. So uh, let's continue. Serious question. So do people still dip snuff? I remember my grandmother used to dip snuff and my grandfather used to chew tobacco. And we almost used to pick up her dip bottle and drink out of it because she used to put it in a Coke bottle. So I remember one time I almost drank it. I'm telling you, somebody stopped me before I could. But do people still do that? One of the more interesting parts of history is that it always repeats itself. So what your generation was doing back in your time may not come to you in about five years or may disappear, whatever the case is, but it will indeed come back and nothing is new under the sun. I personally just think that is amazing. And I'm sure there are plenty of other things that are gonna resurface in the next years to come, which some of it is very positive and I love it. And then you have things like this where I'm just like very disappointed, but we're gonna keep going. All right, watch how I pop in my lip pillows, very demure, very mindful. I'm not just grabbing them out of urinals or storm drains. I've learned my lessons. Very classy, very cutesy not perverted at all. It's always interesting to me when adults do such things and then try to put it in a trend saying it's very cutesy or whatever. There is nothing cute about getting oral cancer. And we'll get into another adult defending this whole take on you're gonna get cancer and whatever the case is. I don't wanna dwell too much on parents or just adults in general when they try to justify their actions because there's just no teaching an old dog new tricks in my opinion. Let's continue. This looks like some Russian sh It's from Siberia. <sighs> Holy sh it's not even white. It smells like ammonia. Maybe we should stick to Zins. You try one, yeah, I'll try one. Jesus, this is kicking in. Do you feel it? Yep. I think it's tobacco. I think it is too. I think it's <laughs> tobacco. I don't think these are fing. It is Russian tobacco, not regulated. Yeah, no, but by the way, I have to sh right now. <laughs> because nicotine this strong makes me. <laughs> I can feel my being like, what are we doing here? <laughs> Find a hole, man. <laughs> Whoa. I'm high. Nicotine absorbs into your bloodstream. It's so toxic that you cannot swallow your saliva. Yeah. You need to take the, that shit off your mouth. No, yeah. I ain't got to eat. Yeah, you do, bitch. Take that shit out. Uh, Is that too much? Mm -hmm. That's enough for you. Mm -hmm. That's plenty. Yeah. Don't. If, if you got the urge to spit, spit in church. <laughs> Don't swallow nothing. Spit. <laughs> Not the same. It's very Oh, yeah. You got a virgin. Yeah. Come on. I got a virgin. 
Man, you shut off. Sticking a good little shit coming out my stick. Matt, it don't come out. Oh, oh. I like that. I don't know why after watching that, my mouth forms saliva more than it usually does. And some things you just have to watch from a distance. There are some things in life where I just learn off of other people doing it. And I just know that I do not want to partake in any of this crap that you are doing. As I said before, influence is one hell of a drug on its own. And if adults can be influenced, peer pressured, whatever you want to call it, Imagine teenagers and so it is not surprising that they are trying this and some of them are ending up being addicted to these things Trying safer alternatives, but making the issues worse. Now. This is the lady that was justifying the cancer causing crap Now do you think I don't know the risk? 16 years ago when I actually started dipping that I could possibly one day have cancer Did you know that certain foods? Lots of foods, those can give you cancer. You know how many other things there are out there that you consume every day that can give you cancer? I got one life, I'm living it. I'm happy, I'm good. And if I get cancer and I die happy, then so be it. I'm not gonna quit dipping, okay? This adult life out here, all this going on, that's too stressful. You know what, when it calms down, which will be never, I might try to quit. But until then, I'm gonna enjoy my dip. You have the day you deserve. Before we get into this lady, did y'all see the lady that was trying that? I almost forgot, she was wearing a retainer. Like you're really doing the opposite of what you're trying to do. You might as well not take care of your teeth if you're gonna dip. Like I said, I don't wanna waste my breath on adults making bad decisions. However, my facial expressions said it all. There's a lot that I could say with what she has mentioned, but you know what? I'm just gonna hold it for the comment section. All I will say though, what I will waste my breath on is that people say things like that when in reality, when stuff hits the fan and you actually get the oral cancer, your views will shift immediately. You will regret every time you put that dip in your mouth. That is all I'm gonna say when it comes to adults. All I'm saying is you will regret it once you have it. You do not know cancer until you have had it, okay? It is not fun. It is not something to take lightly and there I go, there I go. I'm gonna stop myself. Let's continue. Yes, and here's how. It's usually placed inside the lip, whether the front or the back. And where it's most often placed is where the symptoms start to show. That's stained teeth, white patches, and ulcers. Yep, let's get into it. Some of the changes we see include recession. So the gum tissue on this tooth should sit about here, but it's sitting a little bit low, meaning you're more prone to periodontal disease or gum disease and tooth loss. We also see white patches like this where you put the smokeless tobacco. This is called leukoplakia plakia and has an increased risk with oral cancer. And many people I know that take, they're these pouches that come in canisters. I've never tried them, I don't want to. Those are generally four to eight milligrams of nicotine per pouch. I hear over and over again that people take one, they love it, take one pouch, they then will do two a day, three a day, and pretty quickly they're consuming a canister or so, if not every day, every couple of days. So it's a very quick, route to, let's just call it habit. Is it addictive? Maybe. Is it habit forming? Clearly. Um, and this is becoming all the rage now. Um, I don't recommend it. Um, nicotine is a vasoconstrictor, um, which isn't good, raises blood pressure, etc. There's some evidence that nicotine can be a cognitive enhancer and maybe later in life, it might be something that I'll return to in, um, for that reason. Um, but it does have certain health hazards. A lot of my mates, especially at uni, they're doing it a fair bit. If we have learned one thing from the vaping crisis is that we can't just sit around and wait for it to become a crisis. That is why young people um, are taking these for the first time. They want that head rush feeling. At one point, I put eight in just for the like giggles and it like killed my mouth. 100%, these are not legal products. You can't see them, you can't smell them parents wouldn't know if their child was using one. They're so small and discreet, a student could have one sitting in class or a worker at their desk. I mean, it's just outrageous to me that 
a product that is illegal is being advertised so blatantly and openly. Because snus has been in the Scandinavian for centuries, for decades actually, I was curious to know who the inventor of snus was. Snus has a long history of use reaching back to the 16th century and concentrated of course in Sweden. Its origin lies in an invention by Jean Nicot in 1530 to the 1600s, who was a French diplomat residing in Portugal who cultivated tobacco in his garden and was one of the pioneers in recognizing the medicinal properties of tobacco. So what is the smart move if you or someone you know is trying to quit vaping? Switching to snus is not it. While it might seem like a safer alternative on the surface, it's not going to help you break free from nicotine addiction. Instead, you're better off looking into nicotine replacement therapies like gums, patches, or even lozenges. These are designed in order to help you gradually reduce your nicotine intake, making it easier for you to quit for good. And if you're serious about quitting, don't do it alone, please. Support groups, Counseling as well as quit lines can provide the help as well as the encouragement you need in order to stay on track. One thing to know, just like any other addiction, it is not easy to quit, but it is definitely possible and it is the only way to truly escape the nicotine trap. At the end of the day, snus might seem like the better option, the better alternative compared to vaping or smoking, but it is really just a different version of the same problem. The health risks are still there. Switching products isn't going to help you quit. It is just going to keep you hooked on for a very long time until you make that smart decision. So before you reach for that pouch of snus, that pouch of chew, snuff, whatever you call it, thinking it is a safer alternative, remember it is just another form of the same addiction. And the only way out is to break the cycle entirely.